Good evening. This is the video newsletter for Buy Sell Short for Tuesday, December 13th. Another shitty day in the market, uh, especially if you are a small cap trader. Uh, heads up, this could be an X-rated video, just depending on, on how we go through this. Just a frustrating market right now, especially over the last few days. And you know, in retrospect, I should probably take myself to the side and slap myself around just for thinking this year was going to be different and that the annual January popper trend that we play every single year was going to start a little bit early. But, you know, we continue to have that European bullshit still hanging around out there. And after we have a big rally on good European news, it goes without saying that the next day they're going to come out and bash it. And that's what they did yesterday. Small caps, you know, it is normal for small caps to act the way they are acting right now. We are seeing a lot of throw the towel in and a lot of no volume, no bidders, no buyers, and the few sellers that are out there just taking some stocks to the woodshed. Russell, down 2% today, really exacerbated going into the last couple of hours a day. Today was Fed Day. You know, if you looked at the market early this morning, it looked like everything was rosy. We were up 120 points after the open. But the SMH, and we'll flip to the SMH, was rather weak even after the open with the market still up 100 plus points. And that essentially was the indication that things were not as good as the large caps were saying. And, you know, it goes back to essentially Fed Day, 9 out of the last 10 Fed Days, if you did absolutely nothing except sell stocks on the day there's a Fed announcement, you're ahead of the game. Uh, and that might be something to keep in mind going forward. But again, you know, we're feeling a little uh, battered here, needless to say, over the last couple of days after going into some small cap stocks, half positions. We're seeing a lot of stocks just get beaten over the head, especially today. I mean, it was really evident today that there was tax loss selling. Actually, let me pull up a stock real quick. Uh, check out AVII. This will pretty much tell the story. AVII has been trading in, over the last month, a pretty narrow trading range, 67.5 cents to 70, almost 75 cents. 75 cents is the breakout. That's also where the 20-day exponential. Early this morning, broke through it. Decent volume. Traded as high as 78 cents. What did the stock do? Hit a new low going into the close, 67 cents, broke its range, and we were seeing this over and over and over on this market right now. Here's another one. NE Check this shit out here on NEI. NEI trading at 99 cents today. Whew, just like that, 86 cents. What the hell just happened there? I mean, how the hell can a trader trade shit like this other than buying really whacked out robot trades like this and this is what we are seeing in the market SATC that's a recent example January popper play uh, we're gonna go back to the trading action on Thursday looked really really good and then the floor fell out of it traded as low as 60 cents holy crap you know time to stop out of it what did it do yesterday rallied all the way back to 72 cents this kind of bullshit action that we're seeing on a lot of stocks Really, really typical this time of the year. What sucks this year is I got us in a little bit early, so it's a little painful and a little hard to chase some of these. But seeing this kind of action right now, believe it or not, is actually a good thing because there is very strong evidence of tax sellers this year, especially in the small cap stocks. And when you see the kind of decimation you're seeing in small cap land, Right about now, 9 out of 10 times, you're going to see a very nice recovery. And typically, that recovery starts in two days' time, December 15th. You know, one of these days, I'm going to finish this trading book that I've been working on for forever. And some of you long-term guys are going to laugh when I say that. But one of the chapters, actually the biggest chapter in the book, is actually on the January popper strategy. And I actually have one of the first pages in large, bold print says, don't buy till December 15th. And here we were buying a week or so ago on some of these stocks when we could be buying right now. I mean, I got us into MVIS. 46 cents looked really, really good. We could have bought it today at 36 cents. How friggin' annoying is that? And that's essentially this market to a T right now. 
looking at the 15 minute chart you can see we are breaking down from that rectangle formation and we sure as hell better bounce back from this tomorrow or it could get pretty ugly over the next couple of days just because whenever you see a rectangle formation the move tends to be pretty exaggerated on a breakout and especially exaggerated on a breakdown so hopefully we're going to see a breakout odds are pretty low that that's going to happen given that we're still decently eh, i wouldn't want to say overbought but if we look at stochastics on the daily chart at 80 and where we are here i uh, kind of tough to say especially with tax sellers out there few buyers doesn't take much for these guys to push things lower and I don't mean to be negative at all. It's just frustrating over the last couple of days looking at some of this. I'm working on a great January popper list that I should have kept us out of these damn plays till now. But going back, you know, do me a favor. If you've been a subscriber for the last couple of years, go back, run a scan, see your performance from December 1st to December 15th, and then compare it from December 15th till the end of the month and early January and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about a lot of the gains typically come right about now and the fact that we're really seeing these heavy tax loss sellers come in should be a testament now you'll say why would they sell now and the reason being is so they can buy back in early January that the tax loss now buy back in early January now we had the Fed today nothing new from the Fed if the Fed was going to give us that miraculous crack that uh, QE3 everyone has been alluding to, we would have gotten it today. We did not. So the market threw a little temper tantrum. Uh, the minutes that the Fed released today, if you actually read it, was somewhat bullish. I mean, they revised all their little points up to a little bit better than they were in the last report so if you step back and go hey you know the fed's starting to see the economy picking up a little and the economic data is suggesting that we did have yesterday intel come out and warn and that ended up being a double whammy on the market but if you actually read the warning the warning is because there's a shortage of hard drives out there because of the thailand floods that's not exactly a bearish thing but in a market where the headlines continue to be negative. Anything there is is spun negative. You know, you got just this whole negative attitude in this country right now, pretty much driven by the teabaggers and these idiot Republicans who want nothing better than to see the market tank, the economy tank, so that they can win the election next year. Here's a newsflash, guys. This group of candidates you have running for president unemployment could be 30 freaking percent and none of these nut jobs are going to get elected simple as that anyway off the election uh tirade there wow i've really gone on a tangent on this video tonight guys but needless to say take a deep breath sit back uh let's see how things wash out over the next couple of days and i would say what our focus is being and i know the urge just to get up and say f this and walk to the sidelines go play golf or something you know you got to fight that urge right now because i'm look look at nei if you were paying attention to nei today and you saw that stock trade to 86 cents now granted the robots would probably not have filled you at 86 cents but there was an ask at 88 89 cents if you bought this really stupid dip on a really really cheap stock like this today you could have made 5 to 7% in about two minutes' time. This is the kind of crap we're going to be looking for really, really closely over the next couple of days as we wait for these January popper plays to set up. Now, I sent out a list yesterday. There was about 130 stocks on that. I would say put that link, you know, just keep an eye on it. And once you start seeing, I mean, today I had a list of 50 stocks. 47 of them were red. That pretty much told me today is not a day to be picking up some of these January pop plays. But also, you know, when I start seeing a few of these stocks run 10, 15 percent, we're probably going to miss a couple. But once we start seeing them bounce, you'll see, see traders start to feed off of that. You know, today, look at look at this garbage stock today. LIVE up 300 percent on news that they sold shares at $1.24. So the stock ran huge. And then you had traders chasing some of these other low flow turds like REIT, you know, was up 10% on no volume. MEAD, I mean, some idiot bought the stock at 360 today just because some other low float stock was running. 
you got to laugh at this, but seeing this sort of stupidity out there just tells you traders are really, really desperate. No surprise given the last few months. And once you start seeing some of these small cap stocks start their January pop moves, it'll just snowball. We just need to get through the next couple of days of this garbage selling on low volume, and we should be good. But like I said, when you see stocks do this in small cap, I mean, this setup right here looked great, if you ask me, especially on the break today. And then to see it a couple of hours later, pushing new lows for the year, that pretty much tells you that we still have some idiot tax law sellers sitting out there. And it's a matter of being a little bit more patient. Once we start seeing these things pop, we can really start to position with size in a lot of these plays. For now, continue to maintain half positions or less on stocks. And, and you know, if you are feeling uncomfortable in stocks or you're saying, you know what, the bend over action I've had on my butthole over the last week is just too much. I need to raid some cash. That's okay. You can always sell and rebuy. Just because you sell a stock for loss doesn't mean you can't rebuy that stock. So you got to trade to your comfort level right now. And we're still, you know, the tax selling is pretty aggressive right now. And like I said, that's a good thing. Let's see what happens over the next couple of days. And, you know, if you've got any questions, feel free to send me an email, feedback at buysellshort.com or feedback at buysellshort.net. Any issues, any questions on the stocks you're holding, you know, shoot me an email. I have no problem answering any of that stuff. And that's pretty much it for the video. Uh, you know, I could go into some of the stocks we're in right now, but they're all the same. You know, there's just low volume, no buyers. A couple of sellers are taking them down. So it's just a matter of, of sitting back. Actually, you know what? Before I go, I got I to gotta talk about this one. Check out this. CYTR. We had positive data on their leukemia drug yesterday. So what did this friggin' stock do? Drop 20%. That typifies, I mean, some idiot sold this stock at 27 cents yesterday. That's under its cash. That's the kind of market, these are the kind of idiots we have to deal with right now. And, you know, some of these stocks, we're just going to have to sit on them. I mean, how the hell can you sell a stock trading under cash value with positive drug data when you see shit like this? running 300 percent that's just the kind of market we're in right now hopefully this phase will end over the next couple of days and then we can go back to posting kaboom left and right so you know just be patient guys the shit storm should pass really really soon and that's it for the video see you guys in chat tomorrow good night